In this upcoming video, I'm going to look at a couple things. The first one is using citric acid and aluminum and or magnesium to make hydrogen. Secondly, to use that hydrogen then to launch a rocket. Some general information. Metals react with acids to form a salt and release hydrogen. This has been known for some time. The first reaction was first discovered in 1838 by Justice von Liebig. And there's only a couple reactions in this. It's going to be pretty short. The first one is two citric acids plus two aluminums yields two aluminum citrate plus two hydrogens. And the second one is citric acid plus magnesium yields magnesium citrate and hydrogen. Pretty straightforward. In our materials, we only need a handful of things. We need citric acid, aluminum, and magnesium because we're going to be testing these two against each other and water to dissolve the citric acid in. And we're going to do this through experimentation here. And the last thing is a rocket launching assembly, which I'm going to go over down here. I have a really good idea of how I'm going to do this. And this will this is what is going to take the hydrogen we plan on making up here and launching the rocket. In our methods, test the above. All right, went over that already and find the best mix. Now, real quick, the best ratio of hydrogen to air, which is 21% oxygen, is the range. The hydrogen between 60 and 80% and the air between 20 and 40%. Now, if you're talking of pure O2, then you have hydrogen of 67% and oxygen of 33%, which of course is a two to one ratio. So we're dealing with the air here. So the mix we wanna come up is gonna be close to that, I hope. Some of this is gonna be on timing and we'll see how that goes. Now to the rocket launching assembly. I'm gonna start with a container of some sort. I think I'm gonna start with a jar. Um, I know glass isn't the best, but I'm hoping to keep the total pressure down uh, by using very small amounts of the citric acid or aluminum or magnesium. And what I plan on doing is putting a pipe on the top here that opens into this jar here and then have a rocket on top that's hollow in the middle. No engine or anything, just open somehow. Um, so what I'll do is mix the citric acid with either the aluminum or magnesium, whatever turns out to be best. Put it in here as a powder, then pour the water in, then put the top on, put the rocket on. And right here you'll see this little uh, glitch, it looks like really, but that's a spark. So I'll be using a battery with a high voltage generator, close the switch, cause the spark with the hydrogen, and hopefully we get our rocket to launch. I'm excited to do this project, I really am. So let's go do it. To make our citric acid rocket, uh, citric acid and hydrogen, I'm gonna use this glass jar, which typically you wouldn't wanna use uh, glass with hydrogen, especially when it's gonna pop off. But since the hydrogen mix when it lights, the pressure is gonna go through this tube, which will be uh, through the top here and launch this rocket right off the top there. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. I need to put a spark generator, come back here, somewhere in here. So it's coming along. It turned out it was 11 sixteenths uh, bit I needed to drill a hole and that fits so snug. Of course, I'll uh, silicone this to seal it here. Um, so now just need to put the spark generator in this. This is a real basic setup to show how I'm gonna produce a spark to light the hydrogen in that little citric acid hydrogen generator. Um, it's probably an overkill. I've used this in other projects. It works really well and it's dependable. Um, this is a high voltage generator. This is a battery, of course, and this is a switch. And basically in here, it takes this 3.7 volts and multiplies it to around 30,000 volts, very low amperage. If you got shocked, it would hurt bad, but it would not kill you. This is actually what's in a stun gun that police use. So um, I'm just gonna push a switch here to show you it. Pretty simple. So I'm just going to have to mount that right there inside of this right here in this area somewhere. This is a tube that the hydrogen will eventually waft into. So I just want to give a view here of the uh, spark that it'll produce. Count of three. One, two, three. Very dependable. Works with a switch. I made some changes to the design. You just saw the spark that uh, went through this metal tube. When I put the metal tube originally through this Tostitos top here that I was going to just put it in there and silicone it, it just dawned on me that this is metal and I obviously can't conduct power into the point inside of here when all of it's spread out through this top. So that wouldn't work. I found this top here and I drilled a hole into it the same size that was drilled in here. Um, and this I made bigger so hydrogen can get through it easier and this is how it'll be. So this will act as an insulator between the spark and the metal cap here. Specifically for the hydrogen rocket project where I'm hoping to produce hydrogen in that small container uh, and then shoot the rocket off, I plan on using citric acid and magnesium or aluminum and that's just it. I don't know which one of these will produce more hydrogen. They both do. So I've got three grams of each of citric acid. I'm going to mix this with a half a gram of magnesium and this one with a 
half a gram of aluminum. Then, while they're dry, I'm going to put one into here and the other into here. Put some water in, cover it with these balloons, and then shake them good. And I know this is not a perfect experiment, but it should give me some idea of which of these two will produce the most hydrogen. I've mixed the citric acid and magnesium here. I'm going to grind them together good before I put them in the test tube. This might be too much powder for that test tube. If so, I'll just break it into halves for both of these. But I'm going to do this for the citric acid and also the aluminum. So I'm not going to show that. I'll be back when they're both in the test tubes. Obviously, the magnesium's on the left and the aluminum on the right, and both have citric acid. So what I'm going to do is add two cc's, two milliliters of water to each. Okay, so... Two cc's was in the magnesium. Whoa, I did not expect that. Well, that's a lot of hydrogen. I'm not even going to put the balloon on there. Check that out. I didn't expect it to come off like that. Look at that. All right, well, let's do two cc's now, once I wipe my hands, of the uh, aluminum and see if we get a similar reaction or not. If it's just as aggressive, then we'll call this a tie. Two cc's going in. Definitely slower acting. I've been working and experimenting some more with the citric acid and magnesium. And uh, what I have here is 15 grams of citric acid and one and a half grams of magnesium. 10% of the total citric acid, that's how I chose the magnesium to start with and it's worked really well using 200 milliliters of water. I chose that because that fills this up halfway and this will be the bottom of the hydrogen generator rocket engine. So this and this are about the same size, it turns out. So I've been using this and pouring 200 milliliters, milliliters of water in here. And I wanna show you that. And I'm gonna grab my long stick of, uh, of a lighter. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in there. In this colder air out here, it takes a longer time, but not too long. But I like that because that'll give me time to pour it into this and then put the cap on it, and then step back to light it. Now, you can see a couple burn off there. It's not being contained in anything, so unfortunately, Try that one more time. There, happened again. It's a small flame, but of course that'll be contained inside of that jar on the left there. This piece is complete. The only thing I added was this screen, just in case when I add the citric acid and magnesium to this, if it bubbles up too high, it'll hit the screen, hopefully preventing those bubbles from getting up here to the electrical part. Once that's done, I'm going to put the citric acid magnesium in here. I pour water in it, put the cap on, and then put the rocket on top, like so. And then go back and push the button that will connect the battery. This is the battery and the switch hookup right here. So when I press this button, you can already hear it. But down there is the rocket, the water, which needs to be mixed with citric acid and magnesium. But again, I'll push this button, and you can clearly hear the spark works down there. All right, we're ready to go in there the water. I'm going to start right away. I don't know how long it'll take to get enough in there, but count of three. One, two, three. I would say that's a plus. Here's the rocket, and unfortunately it split right open down the side, which is why it popped like it did. So yeah, better rocket uh, probably and less reactants. The best parts about this system is that once it cools down I can empty it, fill it, and try it again. It's been about five minutes since this went off and I took the top off. No harm done. I found what I'm going to do here next and this should work. Uh, this is some tubing, random tubing I have that uh, fits nicely over that and then all I have to do is block the top of that and then use this yellow 
SD's rocket, which was never finished, and put some fins on the bottom. So I think that's going to hold up a lot better. So I put an old cork in there, and then JB welded the top, so this will hold really well. And I'm going to use the same type of glue to do this, and then I just need to attach the fins. The fins are on. I repainted it, and it's ready to go. The mix you see in there is different than the one we just did. This only has 12 grams of citric acid compared to 15 and only one gram of magnesium compared to one and a half. I'm still going to use 200 milliliters of water just to keep that constant. But because this is probably have a smaller pop, I think, uh, I'm going to try the larger Nerf rocket. All set up and ready to go. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, darn. I suspect that the glass was probably slightly cracked with the first attempt and the second one just popped it apart So no big deal. The glass didn't go far at all. It's all around here But you know the other thing I'm not uh, really I hadn't considered so just now is that when I first started this project It was in the 40s outside Fahrenheit and now it's 60 So the increase in temperature could very well be changing how fast that hydrogen is being produced Here's my solution to the breaking glass problem with this hydrogen rocket. This is plaster of Paris and sand mixed together. It needs to be wetted, of course. That's um, steel wool in there with some sand on the bottom to give it some stiffness so that when I put this jar in here, it will sit exactly where I need it to. So the jar will be completely covered with uh, something solid like this. Plaster of Paris cures within about 20 minutes, so it's only been a half hour since I did it. And um, yeah, this is heavy duty. I think even if the glass cracks down here, it's not going to matter. There's just so much here that's holding it together. Thankfully, this survived. Okay, so that's good. And uh, the reason I'm sticking with this still, even though the glass broke, is it's hard to find something, a container, where you can pour water in and close it quickly. I mean, this closes within a quarter turn. So I looked around, couldn't find anything. The other thing I'm doing is cutting back down on what I'm putting in there. So this is only seven and a half grams of citric acid and a half a gram of magnesium. Until I have this figured out, I'm just repairing these foam rockets here. I glued that and then taped it up good um, because I think it might pop open again, even though we're using half of what we did before. And speaking of that, I'm also gonna use half the water. So I'm only using 100 milliliters instead of the 200. I think I figured something out here. I really do. So the original glass jar that broke went with this cap. This cap went with this one, but this was already made. This is the cap that belongs on this jar, and I think that's why that one keeps popping off. Mission accomplished. Something else you'll notice is that this is a much beefier setup. I figured if I'm going to rebuild it, I'm going to make it absolutely as strong as possible. So that's why that looks like that. In addition, I took a funnel, put a straw. It's, I think it's from McDonald's, to be honest. And uh, if I put this in like this, I can pour the water in all the way through down to the screen, bypassing the spark area completely. Take that off and then take the rocket and put that on. repaired these rockets thought I made them strong enough but it tore right through there again this is the heavy-duty rocket I built earlier but before I launched that which I said I was gonna do I took one of the foam ones and just strengthened the bottom I put a PVC pipe blocked the end there glued and taped it to it so this weighs around 20 grams less than the other one I'm gonna try this one first and then we'll try the other one in addition the magnesium amount I'm using is 0.4 grams and the amount of citric acid is five grams. So I cut both of them back again, just a little bit. All right, let's give this a try again. Three, two, one. Hey! Well, look at this rocket, nothing broke on it. I'm not surprised. This PVC and the block in the back there is all pretty strong stuff. It seems like I should have tried this honestly in the beginning, but hey, you live and learn. Just to show you, the glass has been undamaged throughout all of these uh, explosions here. Okay, I have that larger, uh, slightly heavier yellow rocket there that I built, like I said earlier.
three, two, one. Wow. Okay, I don't know if you could see it or not, but it probably went 40 feet in the air. Here's the rocket completely unharmed. That was such a success. That's going to be the last time I think I try this here. I really hope you enjoyed watching this uh, little project progress.